Many politicians and pundits were taken by surprise last year by the vote for Brexit here, of course, and that election of Donald Trump in the United States. Neither had been clearly signalled from opinion polls, but social media analysts at the company Brands Eye did call both votes correctly. I spoke to its chief executive, Jean-Pierre Clopez, about the elections coming this year in key European countries, including France and Germany. He says that analysing in detail what millions of people are saying online provides provides valuable insights into what might happen. That's really where the power of social media comes into a league of its own, in that it gives you this not only a real-time answer on what people are thinking, but more how they feel. It gives you the why behind the what. What about the sorts of themes that emerged in the run-up to the votes on Brexit and on the US presidential elections? And do you expect to see similar themes dominating forthcoming elections in France, in the Netherlands and Germany? It's not rocket science. It was immigration. It's the economy and it's the loss of nationalist identity. That was the same in Brexit. It was the same in the US elections. And we're seeing the same thing happening in the French elections, just in the anecdotal data, which we've been tracking for the past six weeks. And I think for many people who will carry the bulk of the vote, because both France and Germany have got large populations that are aging, the election is not going to be determined solely by the young. The older people are going to play a very big role. And these are the people who are saying, hang on, we've trusted politicians with our future for 20 years now in this sort of combined Eurozone fashion, one currency, one market, all of that. But are we seeing that translate into opportunities for us and our children? And that theme, I think, is going to be exceptionally powerful in both of those countries. Do you think that Marine Le Pen could become the next president of France? The stats for the past six weeks, let me give them to you. Francois Fillon, he's had 380,000 conversations. Marie Le Pen's had 185,000, so half. But what's interesting is she's had 102,000 unique authors speaking about her, and he's had 91,000 unique authors. So she's, at the moment, for the past six weeks, she's got about 10% more people talking about her than about uh, Fillon. And I was surprised when I saw that. These stats are useful, but we don't know how many of those people are for her, how many of those people are against her. And that's where the magic will happen as the elections unfold over the next couple of months. And we don't have that data yet. But in terms of what you do have so far, what can you tell us about your predictions, what you think may happen in the Netherlands, in France, in Germany, perhaps in Italy as well. There's been a lot of talk about uh, the post-truth era that we're living in. I would almost say a better phrase is we're living in a post-trust era. And that post-trust era is reflected in the fact that what we saw in the US elections, people didn't like Trump, to be clear, but more people mistrusted Hillary Clinton. That was the much bigger factor. And just looking at the stats that I'm seeing now, I can tell you that it's a very similar scenario playing out in the French elections. People have lost confidence in traditional politics. And so they're looking for somebody to place their trust in. And unless the traditional politicians, unless they can convince people that you can still put your trust and your vote in us, we're not going to let you down they're going to be surprised. What about a figure who has been trusted so much in the past, Angela Merkel, who's had her difficulties? Do you think that there is a possibility that she could be ousted? That possibility always exists. I think what would be interesting in Germany is to see, is that assumption true across the whole of Germany, that she is a trusted figure? Because your and my perception is that she is, but that may not be true, because that's the big change or the big surprise that happened in the US. Looking at the populist tide, which has really shaken up the established political order we've seen in the United States and here, do you see that growing? Do you think the Brexit and the Trump votes will embolden people to vote for anti-establishment figures in Europe? Absolutely. What social media has given people is licensed to both express how they feel and validate how they feel. And so this populist movement has grown and that'll continue to do so. Politicians are going to need to take some decisive action to be able to rebuild that trust with people across their countries where they haven't done it for years. And that's important to note. This is not something which is just going to be fixed in a moment. It's almost like they need to take the first step in the direction of rebuilding trust with the populations that they've been leading and then execute well on that to maintain it. Otherwise, it's just delaying the problem. It'll be the next election where it's an even bigger growing tide of populism that will create the upset. 
Well, there we are, the view of a social media analyst who called the Brexit result and the US presidential result correctly. The polls didn't manage to do that. That's